So, we're going into our next topic here. We're going to be talking about our Chicago Bears here in uh, Chicago. So, we got to bring up our, the quarterback situation because uh, the Bears aren't looking too good right now. Uh, who's going to be the starter or who's going to go on to finish the season? Is it going to be Trubis- Trubisky sorry, or Nick Foles? So, let's start out with uh, Andrew. Nick Foles. Ditching the hat. Sorry. Foles. <laughs> Matt Foles. You gotta go with Nick. I hate you, Kyle. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah. Inside joke, you guys wouldn't get it. Go on. You, you gotta go with Nick. Uh, I would say Nick, yeah. Oh. But who wants well, to state their uh, reasons? We'll, we'll let Kevin yeah, go. Kevin go for it. Yeah. 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 think about the coach reason, point. I'd say I'm gonna pick Foles because... Of if, if Matt Nagy Andrews switches, our cut scene. if Matt Nagy switches to Foles now, that just proves to the Bears that he has no idea who he wants to be quarterback. You mean Mitch Trubisky? You said Nick. You said Nick Foles. You mean Mitch? Switch Maybe you should it, stop talking. Nagy. Let's let's let Andrew. He's, so, not, a, he's not a. He Bears was trying player. to say. I actually said in our cut scene beforehand. They went went to Nick Foles. Nick Nick Foles knows the offense better. Can converse with Mitch Trubisky or with um, Matt Nagy way more. They have a better um, coach player. They can work on the offense here because they both know what the offense can be. Um, and he played under the OC, right? I'm going to kiss you in a second. <laughs> that makes you shut up. <laughs> yeah, let Andrew stay this point. Uh, right. And, and so, so um, I gave up at Mid- like 100. Yeah. Mitch Trubisky yeah. under, er, under pressure, ranked 27th in completion percentage. Nick Foles under pressure is ranked 7th um, uh, in completion percentage. I mean, right there, I get Nick Foles can't run out of pocket, but Mitch Trubisky wasn't a good... Um, Decision maker under pressure wasn't accurate and faced the top three or like lowest three defenses in the league and still couldn't make that happen with all this talk of how he transformed and became a better quarterback in the offseason. That's everything I said, and Kevin just tried to copy it and did a shit job. Okay, I mean, he's a, not a Bears insider, you know, he's a Packers. He's a big Packer. Yeah. They lost to the Vikings today. But not go on. Defense is. We're not talking about that, but uh, um, Matt, what do you got? So I would say you stick with Foles just because Trubisky was absolute hell for the Bears. I think they're both very poor op- wow. uh, options. Um, not to say that they're horrible quarterbacks per se, but it's more of the, the system, the coaching, the offensive line especially. You know, that's been really exposed these past couple weeks. Today, especially last week, you know, to highlight just a couple bad notions. But, um, I mean, today Nick Foles just looked terrified, and you can't really blame him. I mean, he's got happy feet. Everything was thrown off his back foot. Not That's like he everything throws. off the back foot. I mean, he's, like, jumping around, jumping around. Like, he's scared to death, and he's not making accurate throws. But then again, Trubisky couldn't hit, you know, water if, if he, he was seven boat, feet yeah. deep in the Pacific Ocean. I mean, really, that's how bad he is. And, again, it's just it's more on the coaching, I think, than anything. The, these Bears' offensive struggles. I mean, I don't really want to get into that whole thing, but I think at this point in the year – you know, Nick Foles, we all kind of said in the preseason, he's like that, that wild card that you slip in there for like two or three games to really spark the offense, and then maybe you turn back to mm-hmm. Trubisky. So I think the Bears played their hand a little bit prematurely. Like maybe you should have saved Nick Foles that's for like a playoff saying, run yeah. or something because that's, you know, where he's really experienced he shines, success. Yeah. Maybe not like a whole year, but I think at this point, you know, the Trubisky era is, is, is dead. Um, then you kind of just got to stick with Nick Foles. See, I think he does have a definite better understanding of the game as well. Mm-hmm. You know, Trubisky a little bit more mobile, and you get that dual threat option. But again, I'd rather have a quarterback that knows what the hell he's doing, mm-hmm. or at least acts like he knows what he's doing. And mm-hmm. he's confident in his decisions. I'll well, say. What happened last year? Also, you saw um, people start using spies on the quarterback. The Vikings were the first team to do it and start eliminating that dual threat option. They really said the w- the way we're going to win this game is by making making Mitch Trubisky pass. He didn't win the game, but it wasn't a good game <laughs> by Mr. Okay. Trubisky. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Now I know what you're talking but, about. I still don't understand why Matt Nagy won't give up the play calls to the offensive coordinator that coached Nick Foles. It's true. He, um, Bill Lazor coached Nick Foles last year, and I agree with that. Well, they didn't do shit last year. So well, he was injured, still, and they went to Gardner Minshew. I, I don't think either of those players or either. Well, Minshew did significantly better. No, he he, 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 he sold too? tickets. That's what he did. I mean, he, did he had a couple on the like, huh? Didn't he coach him on the Eagles? Bill Lazor? No, who's the other? Who's our QB coach? Bill Lazor's OC. Who's our QB? Johnny Flippio. He yeah, worked uh, with him in okay. um, Philly. But I don't think it's uh, like it's just because it's the Bears. Like we've never had a quarterback, <laughs> you know, where Jake like Butler. no. 
It's not like it's just an, a decent quarterback. That's why it just gets blown out like, oh, it's Nick Foles' fault or Trubisky's. I think it's most – it's the offensive line. Then I would go with play calling. Then I would go with the quarterback. I agree with those. Because, I agree with that. Like, you could even look at the offense or the – um, rushing game. We can't create seams. No. We cannot and establish a rushing a great game. Running back. He's got great have, vision. Put, but, and he breaks, he's broken those tackles at NFL this year. He, oh. he broke one today. I watched yeah. the first half. I didn't watch the second half. He broke it because the offensive line actually went out there and did their job. Created the seam and blocked. But when they can't do that half the time, what like do you With expect? the top 15 offensive line, you're getting 100 yards each week and you're, you have him on your fantasy team starting every week. He's uh, wasting. He's not. You don't. The Bears should not sign him. Just don't. Don't waste his career. He's a, probably a top five running back. in White is injured. The other guy, like the even with our guy starting offense, well, I think our backups are better than our starting offensive line. Honestly, I, I'd be surprised. Uh, the line. only way I, I'll, I'll mention this: the only way that Trubisky gets back in is if Nick Foles gets injured because of a hit. Yeah, because of one, and he's, line. he's taken them. So I think it comes one of these weeks when he face like the Titans like next week. Let me let me tell you something real quick. I think Matt Nagy and the Bears should use Mitch Trubisky just like Sean Payton uses Tys- Tyson Hill, whatever Taysom. his name is. Taysom Hill and the Saints. As a wide receiver? No. If you So I've been watching a couple of Saints games recently. They always use Drew, uh, Drew Brees for throwing whatever. But whenever they want to run the ball with the quarterback, they always go to Ty- Tyson. What is his name? Taysom. Taysom. Taysom they always go to Taysom Hill, and then he goes and literally gets like 10 yards for a first down always. That's what the, I saw that little but, bit. A couple, Whoa, things, a couple things there. Um, they use him as a wide receiver, too. He's kind of like a weird flex position guy, which is so unique. Hard to I don't think, exactly. I don't think you have back. Trubisky mm-hmm. as, has the ability. Has the ability to throw the ball. But today too. I do want to say it's just, again, poor adjusting. Because like, my dad even caught on to it after I said. It was like, Taysom Hill is on the field. This is a run. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a delayed quarterback run, and he's just going to run through the gut. And the Bears gave up. They only stopped him like once. Or twice and held him to like two yards. The rest were all like ten to eleven yards. Like he's on the field, but, he's gonna run it. Don't I'll, let I'll, him through. I mean, I'll they're telling you the play call. It's because the offensive line created the seams for the quarterback to run. But like, so I'll, then you bring the safeties in the box and you stop the run. You put Roquan Smith in there. You bring but the still they, they did their job. The, when it was the, 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 our, our, I, I, I agree with do. that. I, I the Saints. Offense is extremely predictable, as was the Patriots' offense in 2019. It's dink and Drew, Drew Brees, especially with the win with the win yeah, guys. He, he was that. not <laughs> dealing deep 30 yard bombs. It was dink and duck like Elvin Kamara or whoever the fuck just make their own play. Let them be the game changer. That's all it was. And Roquan Smith and our linebackers like somewhat did at the end of the game on that fourth one we saw off yeah. Elvin Kamara. They did that, but it was the middle of the game down the trenches where we couldn't even stop the dink and duck. It was like come on, like. Chuck, that falls on Chuck Pagano, right there. Not being like game game plan ready. It, this defense isn't the same defense under Vic Fangio. You can say whatever you want. Oh yeah. Chuck Pagano does not blitz anymore. There are no Roquan Smith blitzes up the gut. There's none of that. I'm getting frustrated. Of we're a good defense just because we have talent. I'm starting to get. I'm starting to get very frustrated. With Chuck Pagano, how he's using our our defense and how he's not pass rushing anymore. A Jackson off the corner was off the corner was huge. We used to run a cut or like a similar what to the Seahawks did. That's how. Bo or um how um Eddie Jackson got all his picks. Big Pangio doesn't run that defense. He runs a complete. It's it's not the same defense. It's not. Yeah. I mean, I'd agree. That's a pretty good analysis. We knew that once Vic was leaving though. So you know. but Chuck we all our damn star system that was working. It's that simple. That's what you do. I'm. You don't change the defense that's working. That just had one of the best defenses in the two thousands, arguably. I I'd agree, but I mean. Coming in as a head coach, you know, you have that ego, I think, and you want to run things your way, no matter what the talent. No I mean, you have a good team. defense in the West, but it's not its not what it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, but, the, okay. Yeah. Man, you got anything to say about this? No. Okay. Cut. 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 Fuck Kevin. Cut. <laughs>